The new Sky documentary Royals in Australia pushes a familiar narrative that things went south for Prince Harry and Meghan Markle after their US 2018 tour of Australia. The program suggests Meghan didn't understand how the royal family functioned and that her lack of comprehension led to problems that eventually pushed the Sussexes out of royal life. While this makes for convenient storytelling, it is utter nonsense. The real issue had nothing to do with Meghan's understanding of royal duties or protocol. Instead, the problem lay squarely within the royal family and its institution, driven by jealousy over the couple's extraordinary success and popularity, particularly on their Australian tour. Let's be clear, Meghan and Harry's tour of Australia in 2018 was a staggering success by any standard. It wasn't just the media hype, it was a public relations triumph on every level. From the moment the couple landed in Australia, their charm, relatability and connection with the public was undeniable. Over the course of 16 days, they visited Australia, New Zealand, Fiji and Tonga, drawing crowds that rivaled the heyday of Princess Diana's global tours. The numbers speak for themselves. In Sydney, over 15,000 people showed up at the iconic opera house just to catch a glimpse of the Duke and Duchess of Sussex, despite torrential rain. This was one of the largest turnouts for a royal event in recent memory, far exceeding the usual attendance for other senior royals. When the couple attended the Invictus Games, an event close to Harry's heart, they were met with adoration from both athletes and spectators. Australian Prime Minister Scott Morrison even praised the couple for their spirit and warmth, adding to the glowing global coverage of their tour. The Sussexes' Australian tour was the most high-profile and successful royal trip since Princess Diana's historic 1983 visit. In fact, many commentators drew direct parallels between Meghan and Diana, highlighting Meghan's ease with the public and the clear emotional connection she formed with people wherever she went. The media coverage was overwhelmingly positive, with many outlets noting that Harry and Meghan were refreshing, modern, and exactly what the monarchy needed to remain relevant. Given the tour's success, it's absurd to claim that Meghan didn't understand how the royal family worked. What she may not have anticipated, however, was how threatened the institution would feel by her and Harry's popularity. The narrative presented in Royals in Australia conveniently glosses over the core issue. Meghan and Harry's soaring popularity became a direct threat to the established senior royals, particularly Prince William and Kate Middleton, whose public reception paled in comparison. The idea that the royal family operates as a harmonious unit is naive. The institution is built on a delicate hierarchy where public favour matters more than people might realise. Members of the family, especially those in line to the throne, thrive or falter based on how well they are perceived by the public and the press. In this context, Harry and Meghan's ability to captivate the masses, especially in countries like Australia, which holds important symbolic ties to the monarchy, was seen as a disruption to the status quo. The last time the royal family witnessed this kind of fervour was with Princess Diana, whose undeniable charisma and relatability outshone even her husband, Prince Charles. The parallels between Diana and Meghan were too strong to ignore, and the fear of history repeating itself likely weighed heavily on the royal institution. Following the tour, reports of tensions between Harry, Meghan and other senior royals began to emerge leading to the widely circulated rift narrative between Harry and William. While royals in Australia suggest that Meghan's supposed misunderstanding of royal duties was to blame, it conveniently avoids addressing the elephant in the room, the jealousy and competitiveness that often plague royal dynamics. It's clear that Meghan and Harry's popularity began to overshadow that of William and Kate, who, until then, had been positioned as the future of the monarchy. This isn't to say that the Cambridges were directly involved in any deliberate sabotage, but rather that the institution itself, with its rigid hierarchy and historical precedents, felt uneasy about the rising star power of Harry and Meghan. Royal commentator Omid Scobie, co-author of Finding Freedom, 
has discussed how the press, which had previously been somewhat favourable toward Meghan, began to turn on her after the tour. Scobie, among other experts, points to internal briefings and negative leaks coming from royal aides and courtiers, all designed to tarnish Meghan's image. This wasn't a case of Meghan not understanding royal life. It was the royal machinery moving to protect its own hierarchy by undermining a couple that had become too popular too quickly. Misplaced blame and the true source of the problems. The suggestion that Meghan didn't get royal life is a shallow and convenient deflection. It avoids addressing the institutionalised jealousy and competitiveness that have long been hallmarks of royal life. The royal family is an organisation that doesn't easily tolerate outsiders or disruptions to its carefully crafted image. Meghan was not just any outsider. She was an American, a mixed race woman and a former actress, all of which made her a lightning rod for both the press and internal critics. The cracks that appeared after the Australian tour had little to do with Meghan's supposed lack of understanding. They were the result of an institution threatened by a couple whose popularity risked overshadowing those more central to the monarchy's future. In essence, Meghan and Harry became too big a story, and the royal family, keen to preserve its hierarchy, could not allow that. Conclusion. A flawed documentary that misses the point. The narrative in royals in Australia is not only misleading, but also overlooks the bigger picture. The problem wasn't that Meghan didn't understand how the monarchy worked. It was that the royal family and its courtiers saw Harry and Meghan's success as a threat to the status quo. Their 2018 Australian tour was an unequivocal triumph, reminiscent of Princess Diana's magnetic influence. But rather than celebrating this success, the institution recoiled, driven by jealousy and fear of being upstaged. If we're going to have documentaries about the royals, they should at least tell the full story rather than peddle convenient but inaccurate narratives. Blaming Meghan for not fitting in is a tired trope. It's time to look at the institution itself and its role in pushing out two of its most successful popular members.